Ocean, welcome to Waterstones, first of all. Thank you. Deep pleasure being here. Um, I attended an event of yours uh, where I heard you reading your poetry, and now we're here to talk about your debut novel. Um, I want to talk about the form of it, first of all, because I find that quite interesting. It's written in the form of a letter. Uh, Little Dog is writing to his mother. Yeah. But there is something particular about that, which is that he knows that she will not be able to read this yeah, letter. Yeah. Could you tell us a bit about why you chose that form? Yeah, I think... I was thinking, I thought you have Melville here. I was thinking of Moby Dick. I live in New England, I teach there. And one of the fascinating things about that book is that it, it was uncompromising in the way it followed its curiosities. In a way, it's an essay, it's a travelogue, it's a thriller, it's a meditation on theology. In other words, it was everything Melville wanted to pursue. He said no to nothing. And I thought, what, what would be a good form to allow for the detour? the essayistic detour, um, and that's the letter. So when, you have, when you're writing a letter, the plot is the dialogue, and you can easily retract to it. And it seems comically futile to, to write a letter to a mother who won't read it, um, but that was exactly why I was excited about this project, because then the pressure falls on language itself, in this particular case, the English language. Is it enough? Is the sentence um, a formidable architecture to inquire about life and death. Um, and so I think ultimately it's a, it's a book about language. I'm really pleased to hear you say that actually because I wanted to talk to you about the language. There are two things really I suppose that felt really important to me. One, as a poet, it does feel that you have taken the time to find exactly the right language to describe certain scenes or characters or feelings. And I wondered whether that was a, a painstaking process for you, but also that Language is really important in terms of translation because Little Dog has to act as a translator for his mother because she doesn't speak English. Yeah. And so everything in, in the book between them is, is sort of translated, isn't it? Can yeah. you talk a bit about that for us? Yeah, it was, it was a crossing of certain borders, cultural, uh, linguistic borders. And, and the, the, the fact that, that you know, there's this, this precarious dialogue between the two um, charges uh, the language to be pushed beyond itself. Mm. And I think that was my query. I think at the heart of this book is th the essay in its etymological sense from the French essay, which is to try. The book is an attempt or a series of attempts to see if language can hold this inquiry between mother and son. And I think, was it challenging? Yeah, yeah it, was a ch it, was, it was definitely a challenge. But w I, I learned a lot putting together a collection of poems. And one thing you learn as a poet writing a collection of poems is that every poem is a, a chance to recalibrate language for yourself, whether you're writing a persona poem. Every poem is a mask, so you, you get to start over in your linguistic endeavors. And I didn't want to have much cohesion. I wanted every scene to have oscillation. So you have New England vernacular, you have uh, essayistic, journalistic writing uh, on butterflies and opioid facts. Um, and I wanted it all. I didn't want to, to blend them or have a cohesion um, or evenness. I wanted all of them to be a sort of chorus sitting together. You mentioned there about the, the opioid, um, I'll call it a crisis, because that's often the word that is put together with opioid, talking yeah. about the, the situation in America. And it's very much part of the plot of On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. Um, why did you want to write about that? Because it seems to tap into something very much about modern America, which is being talked about, but not so much in fiction. Yeah, I, I grew up after 9-11, and it was a precarious time to come of age because we were the last generation to play outside. Um, and, and we were in the, mid of all, in the midst of all that. You know, overnight, childhood ended for us around age 12, 13. Um, the towers went down, and everybody, the, the, the playground the next day was a ghost town. And right after that, kids started to experiment with drugs. If you can't do much, if fear becomes a national identity, then you start to have internalized recreation, and that has to do with drugs. And so I saw my friends dropping left and right, and it happened at a time before the term opioid. Crisis. It was just what was happening to mm. us. You know, we, they were called addicts or junkies, and it was still quite shameful. And and I wanted to uncover that because I saw a parallel between the drug deaths 
which is its own kind of slaughter, you know, uh, borderless, you know, colorless uh, slaughter. It, it took everybody in the same way that I saw the parallels of war and, and coming from an epicenter of war um, in Vietnam is that it, th these bodies were just being decimated around you. And how do you build a life within that and out of that? What is it to mean uh, as a person living in the aftermath? The opioid problem, I suppose, is most clearly demonstrated with Little Dog loses a friend and lover. Yeah. And I wanted to talk very briefly about this, the sexuality in the novel. Um, when it was mentioned to me by Max Porter, who, who mm -hmm. uh, his quote is on the back of your book, um, he said, it's just got some great, full-on, beautifully described gay sex in it. <laughs> he said this with such relish. Mm -hmm. um, and it really does. There's, there's amazing descriptions of, of this sort of physical relationship. But it's quite complicated as well because it's about power as well as it is about sort of the tenderness and, and discovery. Tell us a little bit about writing that because writing sex is hard and writing good sex is, is really hard. Yeah, yeah. I think what my, my desire was to make it relentless <laughs> and to have it um, return. Often sex, gay or otherwise, is seen as a plot point. Mm. You, you, you build these characters towards it and then there's a, almost a tension that's relieved, and then you move on. Maybe you get married, um, <laughs> or what have you, or you graduate you know, school. Um, but I wanted, it felt more faithful to me to return to it, that it's not a threshold. Because for queer bodies, you know, we never got the, the, the conversation about the birds and the bees. We have to fail into pleasure, and that failure builds upon itself towards self-knowledge, that every time you fail, you learn something about yourself, and to find and harvest pleasure from one another. And so I wanted that internal crisis and, and that, that drama to be opened and, and for the desire to be felt as weather in the book. And so sex returns again and again, not as something that they get over with, but something that they use to discover and learn about each other. The novel is filled with, I thought, um, what I'll describe as sort of specificity. There's lots of very specific um, locations and characters and ideas and themes. And sometimes it is the very specificity about things that can allow a book to have universal appeal. Yeah. So despite the fact that this is very much about a Vietnamese American experience, and family and a, a nail bar and things like that. I wondered what you thought readers in the UK, for example, or what you hope they might take from reading a book about that. Yeah, I, I always felt that William Carlos Williams' credo, no ideas but in things, that modernist credo of the imagistic truth was quite potent. And Warhol was obsessed with Coca-Cola. Right? He said, well, finally we have something where that the king of Spain and the, the Joe Schmo down the street can experience the exact same thing. He mm. saw it as this democratic, you know, utopia, um, despite its brutal capitalistic toxicity. Um, and I thought, you know, for me, I feel the same way, that, that we, through the specificities, we built and actualized a world in which we can live in. And so if you, if you decorate the book with specifics, you, you, you curate an experience that everyone goes through. And, and I think that's what it is. The book is kind of like a room. Um, and, and the more you put into it, the more a reader, regardless of where they are in the UK or America or in India, uh, can experience that on their own terms. It was a delightful reading experience, despite all the pain and trauma that's contained within it, Ocean. So thank you so much for writing it. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for your questions.